Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Handlebar ASMR. So this video is actually the third in a 10 part series of my favorite weird and creepy fairy tales. Uh, the first episode was The Goose Girl and the second episode was Hans My Hedgehog. So if you haven't seen those, be sure to go back and watch those. And without further ado, this one's on the creepy side. The Girl Without Hands. A miller fell slowly but surely into poverty until finally he had nothing more than his mill and a large apple tree which stood behind it. One day he had gone into the forest to gather wood where he was approached by an old man whom he had never seen before and who said, Why do you torment yourself with chopping wood? I will make you rich if you promise me that which stands behind your mill. What can that be but my apple tree, thought the miller, and he said yes, and signed over to the strange man. The latter, however, laughed mockingly, and said, I will come in three years, and get what belongs to me, then went away. When he arrived home, his wife came up to him and said, Miller, tell me where did all the wealth come from that is suddenly in our house? All at once the chests and boxes were full, and no one brought it here, and no one knows where it came from. He answered, It comes from a strange man whom I met in the woods, and who promised me great treasures if I would but sign over to him which stands behind the mill. What stands behind the mill? We can give him the large apple tree for all this. Oh, husband, said the woman, terrified, that was the devil. He didn't mean the apple tree, but our daughter, who was just then standing behind the mill, sweeping the yard. The miller's daughter was beautiful and a pious girl. She lived there three years, worshipping God without sin. When the time was up, and the day came when the evil one was on his way to get her, she washed herself clean and drew a circle around herself with chalk. The devil appeared very early in the morning, but he could not approach her. He spoke angrily to the miller, Keep water away from her so she cannot wash herself any more, otherwise I will have no power over her. The miller was frightened and did what he was told. The next morning the devil returned, but she had swept into her hands and they were entirely clean. Thus he could still could not approach her, and he spoke angrily to the miller, chop off her hands, otherwise I could not get to her. The miller was horrified and answered, how could I chop off my own child's hands? Then the evil one threatened him, saying, if you do not do it, then you will be mine and I will take you for myself. This frightened the father, and he promised to obey him. Then he went to the girl and said, My child, if I do chop off both of your hands, then the devil will take me away. If I do not chop off both your hands, the devil will take me away. And in my fear, I have promised him to do this. Help me in my need, and forgive me of the evil that I am about to do to you. She answered, Dear father, do with me what you will. I am your child. And with that, she stretched both. For, she stretched both forth. Uh, she stretched forth both of her hands and let her father chop them off. The devil came a third time, but she had wept so long and so much onto the stumps that they were entirely clean. Then she had to give. Then he had to give up, for he had lost all claim to her. The miller spoke to her. I have gained great wealth through you. I shall take care of you and put you in splendor as long as you live. But she answered, I cannot remain here. I will go away. Compensate people will give me as much as compassionate people will give me as much as I need. Then she and her mutilated arm she had her then she had her mutilated arms tied to her back, and at sunrise she set forth, walking the entire day until it was night. She came to a royal garden, and by the light of the moon she saw that inside there were trees full of beautiful fruit, but she could not get inside, for there it was surrounded by water. Having walked the entire day without eating a pot, she was suffering from hunger, and she thought, Oh, if only I were inside the garden so I could eat this fruit, otherwise I shall perish. Then she kneeled down, and crying out to God the Lord, she prayed. Suddenly an angel appeared. He closed the head gate so that the moat dried up and she could walk through. She entered the garden and with the and the angel went in with her. She saw fruit. She saw a fruit tree with beautiful pears, but they had all been counted. She stepped up to the tree and ate from them with her mouth. Enough to satisfy her hunger, but no more. The gardener saw what happened, but because the angel was standing there beside her, he 
he was afraid and thought that the girl was a spirit. He said nothing and did not dare to call out nor to speak to the spirit. After she had eaten the pear, she was full and she went and lay down in the brush. The king who owned this garden came the next morning. He counted the fruit and saw that one of his pears were missing. He asked the gardener what had happened to it. It was not laying under the tree, but somehow it had disappeared. The gardener answered, Last night a spirit came here and had no hands and ate one of the pears with its mouth. The king said, How did a spirit get across the water and where did it go after it had eaten the pear? The gardener answered, Someone dressed in snow white came from heaven and closed the gate so that the spirit could walk through the moat. Because it must have been an angel, I was afraid, and I asked no questions, and I did not call out. After the spirit had eaten the pear, it went away again. The king said, If what you said is true, I will keep watch with you tonight. After it was dark, the king had entered the garden, bringing with him a priest who was to talk to the spirit. All three sat down under the tree and kept watch. At midnight, the girl came creeping out of the brush, stepped up to the tree, and again ate off a pear with her mouth. An angel dressed in white was standing next to her. The priest walked up to them and said, Have you come from God or from the world? Are you a spirit or are you human? She answered, I am not a spirit, but a poor human has been a, who has been abandoned by everyone except God. The king said, Even if you have been abandoned by the whole world, I will not abandon you. He took her home with him to his royal castle, and because she was so beautiful and pure, he loved her with all his heart. And he had silver hands made her, and took her he had silver hands made for her, and took her as his wife. After a year the king had to go out into the battlefield, and he left the young queen to take care of of his mother, saying, If she has a child, support her and take good care of her, and immediately send me news in a letter. She gave birth to a beautiful son. The old mother quickly wrote this in a letter, giving the joyful news to the king. Now on the way, the messenger stopped at a brook to rest, tired from his long journey, and fell asleep. Then the devil came to him. He still wanted to harm the pious queen, and he took the letter, putting in its place one that had stated that the queen had bought a change, had brought a changeling into the world. When the king read this letter, he was frightened and saddened, but nevertheless he wrote an answer that they should take good care of the queen until his return. The messenger returned with the letter, but he rested at the same place and again fell asleep. The devil came again and placed a different letter in his bag. This letter said that they should kill the queen with her child. The old mother was terribly frightened when she received the letter. She could not believe it and wrote the king again. But she got back the same answer because each time the devil substituted a false letter. And the last letter even stated that they should keep the queen's tongue and eyes as proof. The old mother lamented so much that innocent blood was to be shed, and in the night she had, she had a doe killed, cut out his tongue and eyes, and had them put aside. Then she said to the queen, I cannot have you killed, as the king has ordered, but you can no longer stay here, go out into the world with your child, and never come back. The old mother tied the queen's child to her back, and the poor woman went away with weeping eyes. She came to a great wild forest where she got onto her knees and prayed to God. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to her and led her to a small house. On it was a small sign with the words, Here anyone live free. A snow-white virgin came from the house and said, Welcome, queen, then led her inside. She united the small boy from her back and held him, held him to her breast so he could drink and then laid him in a beautiful made-up bed. Then the poor woman said, How did you know that I am a queen? The white virgin answered, I am an angel sent by God to take care of you and your child. She stayed in the house for seven years and was well taken care of and through the grace of God and her own piety, her chopped off hands grew back. The king finally came back from the battlefield, and the first thing he wanted to do was see his wife and child. 
Then the old mother began to weep, saying, You wicked man, why did you write to me that I was to put two innocent young souls to death? And she showed him the two letters that the, di that the evil one had counterfeited. Then she continued to speak, I did not do what you ordered, or I did do what you ordered, and showed him as proof the eyes and the tongue of the doe. Then the king began to weep, even more bitterly for his poor wife and his little son, until the old woman had mercy and said to him, Be satisfied that she is still alive. I secretly had a doe killed and took the proofs from it. I tied your wife's child onto her back and told her to go out into the world and promised never to come back because you were so angry with her. And then the king said, I will go as far as the sky is blue and will neither eat nor drink until I have found my dear wife and my child again, provided that in the meantime they have not died or perished from hunger. Then the king traveled about for nearly seven years, searching in all the stone cliffs and caves, but he did not find her, and he thought that she had perished. He neither ate nor drank during this entire time, but God kept him alive. Finally, he came to a great forest where he found a little house with a sign containing the words, Here anyone can live free. The white virgin came out, took him by the hand, and led him inside, and said, Welcome, king. Then asked him where he had came from. He answered, I've been traveling about for nearly seven years looking for my wife and her child, but I could not find them. The angel offered him something to eat and drink, but he did not take it. Wanting only to rest a little, he lay down to sleep, covering his face with a cloth. Then the angel went into the room where the queen was sitting with her son, whom she normally called, filled with grief. The angel said to go to her. The angel said to her, Go into the next room with your child. Your husband has come. She went in to where he was laid, and the cloth fell from his face. Then she said, Filled with grief, Pick up your cloth for your father, and put it over his face again. The child picked it up, and put it over his face again. The king heard this in his sleep, and let the, the king heard this in his sleep, and let the cloth fall again. Then the little boy grew impatient and said, Mother dear, how can I cover my father's face? I have no father in this world. I have learned to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, and you have said that my father is in heaven, and, there, and that there is our dear God. How can I know such a wild man? He is not my father. Hearing this, the king arose and asked who she was. She said, I am your wife, and this is your son, filled with grief. She saw her living hands and said, My wife had silver hands. She answered, Our merciful God has caused my natural hands to grow back. The angel went into the other room, brought back the silver hands, and showed it, them to him. Now he saw for sure that this was his dear wife and his dear child, and he kissed them and rejoiced and said, A heavy stone has fallen from my heart. Then the angel of God gave them all something to eat, and they went back to the home of his old mother. There was great joy everywhere, and the king and queen conducted their wedding ceremony once again, and they lived happily until their blessed end. And that is the story of the girl with no hands. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, be sure to give it a like. And if you like my channel, be sure to subscribe. And most importantly, join me for another episode of Handlebar ASMR. Thanks again. Subscribe. 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 Subscribe.